My name is Malcolm McDonald. I'm an agricultural consultant based out of the Inverness SEC office. I'm going to talk about the fundamentals of pre-lambing nutrition. This eight-week period is fundamental in ensuring that the ewe and her lambs thrive and perform well. The first step when developing a ration is generally to divide the ewes into different priority groups based on scanning results. The top priority is the triplets and thin twins, second is the twins and any thin singles, and lowest are the singles and fatter twins. This allows feeding to be better targeted. I'm mainly going to talk about hay or silage based rations with concentrate supplementation because this is the most common system with March April lambing flocks in Scotland. Now the table on screen shows an example ration based on, uh, on either hay or silage forages along with a stepped rate feeding system for the concentrates. Flat rate feeding can also be done which is where an average of this feed, of this feed level uh, is fed right through at one rate uh, up until lambing time. This example is only a guide. It's very important to note that silage and hay are, can be variable in their quality and I'd always encourage you to analyze your, analyze your forage and then develop a, a ration based off this analysis. Otherwise, be either overfeeding yows or underfeeding them. And if you're unsure when developing a ration, always consult a nutritionist. When purchasing concentrates, always ensure that good quality ingredients have been used, like barley, wheat, distillers, grains, which have good energy levels. You would look for these ingredients to be near the top of the ingredient list on the description of your concentrates. Introduce concentrate feeding gradually, and if going higher than half a kilo per day, the feed must be split into two feeding times to ensure that acidosis does not incur, occur within the hours. Grazed grass can also be used as the principal forage depending on lambing date and grass availability on the farm, but we would always look for a sward height of 4cm or more along with active growth before supplementation can be elim eliminated. And if the growth drops off and uh, the grass drops below this, then some kind of supplementation would have to be introduced again. Once you have decided on a ration, you then need to consider the logistics of feeding it to ensure the ewes get the ration they are allocated. One of the most important factors is feed space. If there's insufficient feed space, then shy feeders like gimmers and other younger, smaller sheep will not get the ration they've been allocated. The more dominant sheep will then get more feed than they should, and this can cause problems for both of these groups, either through small weak lambs with the underfed yows or lambs that are too large with the overfed yows. The table on screen shows the required amounts for feed space to ensure there's adequate, adequate room. It is also or equally important for forage uh, the feed space as well, particularly if you're feeding a silage based ration and relying on high quality silage to reduce any the amount of concentrates fed. It is crucial that the yows have ready access to this silage and can eat it before it goes off and starts to spoil, at which stage then their intakes would drop and their nutritional needs might be compromised. Another fundamental point to always keep in mind is access to clean water. Without access to water, the sheep may not eat their full ration that they are allocated, and again, they, their nutrition will be compromised. This is very important when they start to move on to a higher feed of concentrates because their, uh, their appetite for water will increase. You can find more information on all aspects of sheep nutrition on the Farm Advisory Service website, and another very useful resource is the Feeding the U booklet, both of which are linked to on the screen right now. If you have a more specific inquiry, the advice line information is also on screen.